Hi everyone, I'm John from GDS Gamer, and we're looking at a game today called Chaos of Deponia, Deponia, sorry, that was released on PC a few years ago, and it's coming out on Xbox One and PS4 on the 6th of December. So if you watched our video on Simploki last week, you'll know that I don't really play too many point and click adventures, and so it's quite strange that we've now heard two in a row. But nevertheless, we're going to have a bit of a go on it and just show you guys what, is, what the game is actually like. Um, the game itself is actually the second instalment in a series called, you know, about Deponia. Though the this game is pretty much self-contained. You don't have to have played the first game to know what's going on, and they go to quite a lot of detail in the first few minutes just to make sure that you know that you don't really have to know what's going on. They do a bit of a catch-up, but it's very much, you know, you you don't really have to know what's going on. So the bit we're at the moment is we've just finished a long old task of getting a girl's mind back together it was kind of fractured into three different bits and we had to go and help out um, by doing that though we've ended up with a weird hostage situation in which goal the girl we're, go we're trying to save has been captured by a group called un the unorganized crime syndicate so um, so we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys you know what the game has to offer. It's actually really funny. I've been playing it for a few days now, and um, again, from what I've seen of games like uh, Curse of Monkey Island and stuff like that, it feels like it's trying to recapture that kind of, you know, wacky point-and-click adventure style. So anyway, let's get to it. Oh yeah, so this is our protagonist, Rufus. He's kind of a uh, like a steampunky version of Guybrush, three uh, Guybrush, Guybrush. I think that's his name from Monkey Island. So anyway, we've been given a remote. What do we have to do? So we've been given a remote that we have to use on Leebold, who is the character on the far left, smoking a cigarette and looking quite grumpy. Well, not grumpy. Skanky? Yeah, probably a bit skanky. Anyway, we're going to use this remote on him and see what happens. Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, we haven't had anything like this yet. So let's go into the mysterious anomaly and see what happens. Oh, it's me. Of course, yeah, space time curvatures with a cuckoo clock made of wood. I just love the stupid smile he does. Uh, so yeah, again, just like most games, we kind of have little dialogue options that we can go through. Right, so we've been given proof that this is definitely our future self, not Cletus, who's kind of like um, yeah, a weird kind of half baddie in the game. And we're going to go and try and save goal now, hopefully. How is he going to take care of the rebels? Oh no! Bite out his eyes. That's, that's really unnecessary. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, so when we were getting the last quest done, we ended up actually joining the unorganized 
crime syndicate as well. So now they're our friends and hopefully that will help us out. Okay, so I've got a plan, but I don't know where it is. Um, hmm. Right, I'm going to have a look around, just see what's going on. Ah, uh, okay. Right, so what I've actually got is... I've, I've got this remote that can actually change... Oh, no, I don't. Never mind. Right, um, what I would say about the game is that you know, the puzzles, I, I'm not very good with point and click adventures, so the first, the very first quest, like main quest I had to do, I actually did manage to do without a guide, but everything since then I have had to use a guide for, which does take the fun out of it a bit, but, you know, it, it kind of follows the same twisted logic of um, some classic point and click adventures where, unless your mind works in a really peculiar kind of way, you're not going to get what you need. Right, so what's in here? Ah, oh, two more remotes, eh? Okay, right, oh, messing about time travel and everything. Okay, great. Right, so I'm going to try and use this remote on Donna to see what happens. Ah, oh, right. So I've tried talking to um, Wink and Nod, Donna and Doc, so I'm going to go back to Goal, see what she has to say. Yes, yes, I laugh. Okay, I found this remote, good. Oh, just, come on, give me the bloody cartridge. Okay, now... Like I said, because Goal's mind has been split into three different personalities, the one we're dealing with is kind of very posh. So I've kind of spoken to her in these two ways before, earlier, when I was trying to convince her to get some surgery and she wouldn't listen. So I imagine the champagne is the one I'm supposed to go for, so let's give that a go. Aha. Oh great, okay that was easy. Now, okay, now I can transport her mind into Donna's. Okay, and again, just like most point and click adventures, we have got the inventory where we can combine stuff and everything like that. So, I think this is what I'm supposed to do. Yep, Donna's remote. Okay, so let's try that on Donna now. What am I doing? I don't know. Okay, and it... Oh, no! Oh! She killed them! <laughs> no! Gold's gone insane! Um, Rufus is very much that kind of quintessential stupid hero who's who seems to think he's brilliant at everything but he's pretty rubbish at most stuff and everything happens is kind of a fluke saying that you know he is still quite he's still quite funny to listen to and you know he does a lot of stupid faces Oh right, and our future self is about to go out there and shoot everyone. So I'm going to take the gun off the now dead guard there, poor guy, and go and shoot all the rebels, I imagine. Oh, I didn't hear any of that. 
I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. Oh no. Okay. I have, okay, so I haven't got anything new now. Uh, so I'm gonna grab the gun and the crowbar for some reason. Okay. <laughs> he hates himself. Oh, okay, I'm just supposed to just go out the door. <laughs> That's a lot more simple than something I had in mind. So I need to just okay. So now we're just replaying that bit that we did before. Ah oh man, so much time traveling going on, seeing everything from different points of view. So tiny. So yeah, in terms of the other past kind of puzzles we had to on this, it really is. You know, some of them are quite wacky. I mean, there's been a few where we've had to you know mess with the settings in the game and everything like that and what I would say is that you know if you're gonna play this don't don't feel that you can't use a guide for it because there are some parts that will just massively kind of have you at a loss unless you know what you're doing right so now what am I doing now I think I'm gonna go back in there and then try the anomaly again so I'm gonna run into the anomaly excuse me oh no the anomaly's gone. And I just, I was talking. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing now. Okay, yeah, I'm going to just use the crowbar because it's metal. Oh, I'm so smart. Aha. Uh -huh. Here's me from the past. Yep. Of course. What? <laughs> what is he doing? Right. I imagine then I need to, because he's going to try and guess. I have to guess what he's going to be thinking, but I don't want to make a time paradox. I'm going to see if it does make a time paradox though, because I already know what I picked. So I'm going to see if it messes anything up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Apparently time paradoxes hurt quite a lot. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't have really should have done that. Do I have to do that all again now? No, I don't. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's good. They let us just fast forward through it. Ah. <laughs> time. <laughs> Having fun with time travel. <laughs> right, okay. Wait, doesn't that mean then that one of these rivers just constantly stays in a loop where he's always just doing the same two tasks all over again? Surely, I don't ask. Oh, this is why you shouldn't have time travel in games, it just hurts my head. Okay, so I think I just have to actually be patient. What are you doing? <laughs> Slapped by a clock. Okay, fair enough. Oh, okay. I think people are coming in now. So these are the rebels.
no bullets. Oh no. What? What does he know? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh no. Oh, good for him. As long as they're happy. So, that's the kind of weirdo, stupid person the, um, Rufus is. He's going around kissing people he thinks are gold. I don't think they are. <laughs> what? So, the remote we used is for a disco ball. Why is it called Leopold then? <laughs> I'm not surprised, I just, I just kissed him very passionately. Oh, such sad music. Oh no. Gold doesn't like the chaos we're making. We only messed up the space-time continuum a little bit. We didn't even do that many time paradoxes. Oh, we even get a cool singing bard. Look at him, he's so, so steampunky. This metallic hat with a... Is that a car tire for a brim? Good for him. Oh, he's making the most out of his, out of his existence. The very last thing I would like to say about this game is that it has actually got some really catchy songs in it. There's a, there's a bit with a gardener where if you just look at him, it, they sing a song about how ugly he is and it's, it's good. It's been stuck in my head for a while. Okay everyone, so that was a quick look at Chaos in Deponia, which is out on PS4 and Xbox One on December 6th. It's already been out on PC for a while, so if you are a PC player and you haven't played this, I very much recommend it. Um, we'll be back next week with something that definitely isn't a point and click adventure, I promise. If you've enjoyed this guys, please do like and subscribe, and do leave us a comment if you're planning on playing it or if you've already played it on PC. Uh, and please do tune in you know, for more gaming videos, and do visit us at ggsgamer.com for daily news, interviews and reviews, and follow us on Twitter at ggsgamer. Okay, bye guys. Um, until next time, see you later. Bye.